So senior year, it's already here. You are gonna hear about grades and plans after high school. You're gonna talk to your parents and there's gonna be some stress with some decisions you have to make. We're gonna talk about graduation requirements and becoming an adult. Um, finances are gonna come into play as well as social life, your senior schedule, work, activities, and all these things are gonna start adding up. What you need to know is we are here to help you through this process. The most important thing is that you communicate with us early on. That way we can kind of help you through some of the decisions that you need to make, help you find information, and kind of make your senior year go as smooth as possible. There are two main ways that we relay, relay information to you the class of 2025 group, as well as individual counselor groups. Um, if you are not in your school counselor, Schoology group, please send them a message. That way we can add you into that group so you don't miss some of the opportunities that we post about. Um, some of those opportunities include fall workshops on college applications. We do one on a Naviance refresher. We do one on the Common App, scholarships, choosing a path. So there's a lot of workshops that happen right in the beginning of the year that we want to make sure you're aware of. Other things we post include scholarships, employment opportunities, um, career opportunities. So it's very important that you turn your notifications on. Your senior year schedule um, can get a little tricky. Um, we know there's a lot that you guys want to do. Please review your entire schedule in the summertime. Your courses, when we send out your transcript, your senior courses are listed on that transcript. And if you change them after we send out those transcripts, sometimes it can affect some admission decisions. So it's very important that we look at your senior schedule in the summer and get all the changes that you want made during that time. Once the school year starts, we are not changing schedule. So very important to do that. If you are thinking about going to college, you are going to want to consider taking additional classes in math and science. If you are going into medicine or nursing, make sure you get statistics, chemistry, anatomy, and even physics. Thank you, Mrs. Hurdle. All right, so when thinking about um, what to do after graduation, you know, that can be uh, a little overwhelming to think about. You know, there's a lot of options, you know, whether that's college, trade school, military service, employment, or a gap year. Um, it's just a lot to think about. Um, but with all these options, um, you know, comes responsibility. And it's your responsibility to you know, make the best decision for you. And this is like the first step um, of making, or the first step of uh, making a, an adult decision. And there's a lot that goes into that, but there are a lot of people here to help you out. Um, you know, so, you know, the counselors, the teachers, the administrators, as well as your family um, as you're going through this process. And so whenever you are dreaming about, um, you know, what you want to do, you know, just make sure that you're realistic about it. Um, I know a lot of you guys have big dreams about, um, you know, um, all the things that you want to do, but just make sure that, you know, you know yourselves better than anyone, so just be realistic about um, what you're doing. Do your research. You know, where do you start? Uh, so a lot of you guys have already uh, started that process, you know, um, so I encourage you guys to have those continued conversations at home with your family and friends as well as continue conversations uh, with your counselors here at school, as well as your teachers. Um, there's a lot of um, you know, resources here to help you out uh, during that process um, as you make this decision. So you know, use your resources. OK, research, educational options. Uh, a lot of you guys should know about Naviance, uh, Big Future, uh, College Scoreboard, iPads. Um, and a lot of you guys have, um, through the career pathways, have gone on college uh, visits and tours um, and even uh, college fairs. So we encourage you guys to continue to do those things and going on college tours this summer. Uh, that's a great time to check out more schools. And it gives you an opportunity to compare schools and uh, training programs 
so that when you come back in the fall and you start uh, the process again of uh, making your decision, it kind of helps out. Good morning. So I'm going to continue on here with some research and talk about researching careers. So when we talk about um, careers, I, I, this is a difficult conversation sometimes because uh, although I don't expect you to, to everyone in here to know exactly what they want to do when they graduate um, as far as a career goes, I also think that the more you make an effort to learn about it, the better you are in zeroing in. I don't think it always comes and just falls in your lap and you know what you're gonna do, okay? So um, take some time and do a little research to try to figure these things out. So some of this you've done in college and career readiness, but I just wanna remind you of some sites. So Naviance again, ONET Online, it's one of my favorites. I think it's fantastic. There's an amazing amount of information there. Um, Department of Labor, uh, stemjobs.com, and stemjobs.com is a little bit different than these other ones, uh, how it organizes information, but again, a great resource. And the last one on there is job shadowing. So um, if you could raise your hand, if you have been on a job shadow during high school, could you raise your hand? If you've gone with somebody, and real high so I can see, and you've spent a day or a half day, excellent, that's awesome. If you've done that, fantastic. If you haven't, um, you can take a school day and do that as a field trip day, or you are welcome to do that in the summer too. It really is a great opportunity. I've had students come back to me and say, oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna be a lawyer, and that is totally not what I want. Now I gotta look elsewhere. Let me, let me try and investigate some other jobs. I've also had students who come back and say, I couldn't be more sure, that is a perfect fit for me. Um, and I've also had students who say, hey, you know what, I went to that law office, but guess what, I really had a great day, but I saw another job there that I'm interested in. So um, it can be really insightful. The other thing that I think is great is talk to adults. Now, Mr. Um, Tyree mentioned that. Ask people how they got to where they are. What was your career path? How did you get where you are, okay? And that's all kinds of people. Even if you think you're not interested in that job, ask that question. I, uh, I remind students that I work with often, adults love to talk about themselves. So ask the question. Rarely is an adult gonna say, hey, I'm not gonna share that with you, okay? So ask that question. All right, let's talk about military options. So there's a number of different military options. Um, you can see the website up there. There are individual websites also, if you know what division of the military you're interested in. And then within the military, there's a number of different possibilities. So know that we have recruiters come here. We would encourage you uh, to meet with the recruiters. You can always let Mrs. Loomis know. She can get you on the list. So if you are interested in National Guard, then she can make sure that when the National Guard comes that you get called down to meet with that person. There's also ROTC programs. Um, that is where you would be attending um, at a regular college or university, but you would be connected with the military, and then you also um, agree to serve in the military when you're done with your college experience. And then there are also military academies. And um, if you're interested in the military academy, I would tell you uh, my best piece of advice is immediately after this meeting, come find your school counselor to get more information because military academy acceptance, um, the application process really starts now. Um, so if you're interested in that route, we gotta get moving, okay? Um, the next thing is electronic footprint. So I say this every year and I worry about it every year, please be super careful. I can't tell you the number of students who say, they won't be able to find me, it's under a different name or a number or whatever. And I can tell you that there are um, employers, colleges and universities, scholarship providers that employ people to find those connections, okay? So be real careful. Um, and that goes for pictures um, that you are in as the main person or pictures that maybe you're in the background. It also includes negative remarks. Could include, now you just take this with a grain of salt, could include political viewpoints. So just be real careful there, okay? Um, 
if someone wants to find you and find what you post, a lot of times they can. Okay? There have been situations where college acceptance or scholarships are retracted um, based on what someone posts. So I, I would hate for any of you to be in that situation. Okay, let's start with application terminology. Um, one of the things is Common App. Raise your hand if you know what the Common Application is. Real high, let me see. Okay, so that is totally fine. You haven't started this process yet. So what I would say is, um, if you plan to apply to college um, using the Common Application, um, and what it is is a centralized application, um, there's a number of schools that are partners, and they have one application. It's a little tedious, uh, a little bit lengthy, because it meets the needs of all the schools. So if you are interested in applying to schools that way, I would encourage you to stay after this meeting. We'll talk about it a little bit more. The other way is you apply directly to the college or university on their website. Okay? So the other thing is Naviance matching. Did you want to jump in here about that? I can. Um, Naviance matching is if you are applying using the common application, you have to match your common app account with Naviance. There is a video under that resource section that takes you step by step through that process. Um, if you are going to match your common app and your Naviance account, you have to wait though until it rolls over until the following school year. So normally that happens closer to the end of July. So just make sure that if you are applying using the Common App, that you match those accounts because all your transcript requests and your letters of recommendation will actually go through Naviance. Okay, and we will have a workshop for that in the fall as well. The other terminology that um, we would like you to be aware of if you're applying for colleges and universities is um, early decision and early action. These are often confused. Um, early decision is a binding um, agreement. Essentially, if you apply to that school, you say if you're accepted and the financial aid is appropriate, um, that you will retract your other applications and that you will attend that university. So that's, that's a pretty serious commitment if you do early decision. Early action is when you, it's non-binding, you apply pretty much saying this is one of my first choice schools, and then you get a decision earlier, okay? So um, those are important definitions, terms to be aware of. Rolling admission is essentially kind of what it sounds like, is that the school, as they receive applications, they make decisions, okay? So the earlier you apply, the better, but there isn't necessarily a cutoff date. One of the things that I like students to be aware of is that when we talk about college applications, is that the university, like Penn West, let's use Penn West Edinburgh as an example, the university may not have a deadline as to when you have to have an application uh, in by, but they might have a deadline for a certain program. So nursing might have a uh, November 30th deadline. Okay, so you gotta be real careful and look at the specific program that you're applying to, not just the college or university. Oftentimes that happens with physical therapy, happens with nursing, happens with um, pre-med, pre-law programs, and engineering programs, okay? So you wanna be real, real aware of that situation. And then um, FIA and FAFSA. FIA is the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. Um, you wanna apply for state money through FIA. And FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. So that's national, and that would be federal money. Um, and a lot of times we have students who say um, that they're not going to apply for FAFSA or FIA because they don't think their income will qualify them. But I will tell you to be real careful with that thought process because some schools will not issue you scholarship money unless that has been filed. Okay, so just be real careful about that. Perfect. Okay. Applying to post-secondary schools. The first thing you want to do is communicate with your school counselor. We love to know where you're applying. Um, that kind of gives us the heads up as well. So we ex can kind of help guide you through turning in the transcript request form. Um, attend the financial aid meeting at General McLean on September 30th. 
um, at 6 o'clock. So this is where you learn about that FAFSA and the federal, federal aid money. We will also send information home to your parents with this information and these dates as well. But it's good for you guys to kind of know that process. FAFSA officially opens sometime in October. We're hoping October 1st. Um, and then you apply to the school. You find a school that you really want to go to, and you can apply either directly to the, the school itself through their website or using that Common App. A big misconception is that students think that they apply through Naviance. You do not. You can get to their application through Naviance. So if you look at a school and we'll say Gannon, for example, and it says apply here, it will take you to Gannon's website um, to apply to that school. Complete the transcript release form and turn it into your school counselor. Um, we do have transcript release forms up here. This feature will not be opened up in Naviance until we have one of these on file for you. This allows us to release your transcript when you request it in Naviance. You can fill this out this year and turn it into the guidance office, and we will make sure that um, it is open for you when you go to apply to the school. Then you request your transcript in Naviance. After that, if you need letters of recommendation, you fill out a recommendation form, and in a little bit, Mr. Tyree will talk about this form a little bit and talk about um, letters of recommendation. Both of these forms will be available after the presentation. There are some over on the left side and the right side. Be sure to follow up with your school. So sometimes you put in your transcript request, we send the transcript. In Naviance, it will show you if the school has downloaded those forms. Along with those forms is a school profile, um, letters of recommendation, so you will be able to see when the schools download those forms. I know a lot of schools open their application in, on August 1st. It takes us some time to get the school profile ready. So we do not send out transcripts closer to that October 1st. So even if you request your transcript on August 1st, it will not get sent out until October, until that school profile is complete. We need the information um, regarding SAT data and some other data that takes a little bit to compile. So please be patient. Even if you apply on August 1st, there are some schools that you will not need our transcript for, um, they will have what they call the SARAR, which is a self-reporting academic record, and you will actually put in your classes for that school. Penn State is one of those, Pitt is another school that has the SARAR. And as Ms. Sway said, please pay attention to deadlines. It is very important that you meet those deadlines, whether it's for a school application or for a scholarship. Are you up or still me? Okay, pay attention to cost. Remember that FAFSA night is on September 30th. We will also host a FAFSA completion workshop for people who have questions. We will also post different webinars um, hosted by FIA that help parents and students walk through that FAFSA process. My Smart Borrowing is an interactive tool that College Board um, graciously gives everybody. You will be able to create four scenarios and see if you are at risk for overborrowing. Scholarships are all listed on Naviance. So in Naviance, there is under the college tab, there's a scholarship tab. There are national scholarships as well as local scholarships. Talk to a lot of the financial aid offices at the colleges and schools that you're applying to. Depending on your major, there may be other financial opportunities for you and other scholarships available. Talk to your family. See if they belong to a credit union. See if they belong to an organization that hosts a scholarship. So there are many different ways um, to kind of cover the cost of college. You just have to do your research. Absolutely. You need this. So real quick. Um, I need a volunteer to tell me how much they think 
it uh, costs, when we're talking about costs, I want you to have a real perspective of this. So can you raise your hand if you know how much it costs uh, to attend and live on campus at Slippery Rock University? Anybody? Come on, somebody's got to have a guess. We have a prize. Slippery Rock. Give a guess. Per year. We're talking per year. What'd you say over here? 28. You're close. Anybody else have a closer guess? You're even closer. We'll give it to you. You get the prize. 22000 a year. <clears throat> right around. I didn't look. That's, I, it might be last year's tuition rate, but it gives you a perspective. So if we look at different schools, they're not all the same. <clears throat> so if we look at different schools, I looked up Duke just for the heck of it. We have had uh, one or two students from here go to Duke. Mrs. Yonko's daughter. Um, so if we were looking at the price tag, now you don't always pay, pay the price tag amount. How much do you think it costs to attend Duke? Now you would be an out-of-state student. Per year. 45, what else, a little higher? 62, you're getting closer. Keep going. 70, we're getting closer. You're really close, so you get the prize, 87000 a year. Well, you multiply that by four years. If you're lucky enough, listen to this, if you're lucky enough to graduate in four years, you work hard and that's your goal, you can do it. The amount for that, if you pay 87000 a year, is about $350,000. So these are big decisions. And I will tell you, same if you go to a technical school or trade school, the amounts that you pay are significant. So you want to do everything you can when we talk about paying attention to cost. It's serious business. So use your counselors, use the scholarships, um, so, and pay attention to how much things cost. Thank you, Mrs. Weiss. All right, I'm going to follow up with a question as well. Can anyone tell me what uh, you would need a letter of recommendation for? There you go. Anyone else? So Ethan said employment. Get into school. One more. Colin. And a scholarship. Correct. So those are uh, some reasons to need a recommendation letter for employment, uh, college application, scholarship application. So recommendation forms, those can be found on Schoology as well as uh, in the guidance office. So. Um, after, whenever you request a uh, recommendation letter uh, from someone or one of the counselors, uh, make sure you complete that form. We need that information so that we can uh, <clears throat> write a, a really good letter for you. Um, the one that I like the most, don't be humble. Um, when you fill out the form, uh, make sure you highlight any uh, recognition uh, that you received, any awards or honors, if you belong to any clubs or activities, if you uh, have a part-time job, you volunteer anywhere, make sure you brag about yourself. Include those things uh, in your form so we can include it in your recommendation letter. Uh, thank the people writing the letter and please allow the counselors uh, 10 school days to process your transcript and your letter of recommendation form request. Uh, other issues to consider, uh, show of hands, how many student athletes do we have in, in here today? Okay, that's a good number. So. Uh, for NCAA, uh, the NCAA has GPA requirements and course requirements for Division I and II athletes. So for those student athletes who are um, going to pursue, uh, continue to be a student athlete at the college level, uh, make sure you uh, stop in to see us uh, to make sure that you're meeting those requirements and then also visit the NCAA uh, website as well. Uh, ROTC, military opportunities. Uh, and like Mrs. Hurdle uh, mentioned earlier, and that's pretty much been our theme, uh, make sure uh, that you communicate with us. And a lot of you guys have already done a great job of this, but even more so next school year, uh, communication is key. Um, and I think we talked about deadlines, 
uh, that plays into it as well. So make sure, you know, um, you know, if there's anything you need to read, uh, any message you need to get to us, make sure you do that in a timely manner. Okay, and see your counselor if you have any questions or if you need help with any applications. Okay, I'm gonna move a little quicker through this one. Um, so junior year, you need to decide uh, SAT or ACT. Remember, ACT has a science section. Um, many of you already took the SAT here, which is great. Um, take advantage of summer opportunities. We mentioned job shadowing, but there's educational opportunities. You can visit colleges or trade schools, and you can do additional research on some of those sites that we gave you. Beginning of your senior year, we encourage you to apply. Senior year, believe it or not, can be really stressful. So one piece of advice I like to give is get the applications, whether it's college or trade school um, or military academy, get them off of your desk. Do it and be done, okay? Um, so the sooner you do it, the better. Your odds are better anyways. So we encourage you to do that at the beginning of the year. You, we've already talked about FAFSA and um, FIA and when those opportunities are going to be available. We have in this uh, PowerPoint some SAT timelines, some SAT dates and where you register, and some ACT dates and where you register, so you can find those. And then the, um, the last thing I want to mention is communication. We've said that throughout. Um, we welcome this. We want to get to know you better. It's easier for us to write recommendation letters. So never think that we're too busy to meet with you. We might not be able to meet with you at that uh, exact moment, but we will get to you, and that's what we love. We love to be meeting with students. So please ask questions, provide us with updates, um, and you know, frequent, frequent our offices, okay? Thank you. If you have questions, let us know. One thing before um, we introduce our panel is communicating with us helps us help you. Um, we have a lot of fee waivers for schools, so those applications start adding up. So if we know where you're applying, we can help you in that way with giving you fee waivers or helping you through that process. So I know we've, we've kind of almost made it comical about how much we want you to communicate, but we really need you to communicate and talk to us. We love hearing from your parents, but we want you to kind of step into that role and come down to the guidance office and tell us what you're thinking, tell us what your plans are, where you're at in the process. If, if you are completely lost and overwhelmed, we want to know that too so we can help. So please, please, please make sure you communicate. Okay, a couple of quick announcements before we open it up to the uh, student panel. Um, May 2nd um, will be the uh, ASVAB test. Uh, all juniors to, are to report to the cafeteria. If you score 31, uh, it is a qualifying score for the Keystone Pathway to opt out. Um, have your parent or guardian uh, email Mr. Minnow. Um, another announcement, prom volunteers. Uh, the prom committee is looking for students to volunteer uh, for setup and cleanup. If you're interested in helping, please email uh, Mrs. Stairs or stop by uh, room 108. Okay, so next um, we're going to uh, pivot and transition to um, our student, our senior student panel. So um, I think this is our favorite part of this presentation. So give us a second and then we'll get started. <laughs> 